We're recording. Um, you are in Creating Nimble Drupal Systems, Transforming a Drupal Team in Six Months. And these are the other things you could be in. <laughs> so if you're in the wrong place, one of you three. Um, hear people that over here. I really wanted to go to this one, but unfortunately my talk is um, at the same time. Okay, so here's the agenda. A little bit of uh, an introduction. You know, hello. Kind of why are we here? What's the story about? What are nimble Drupal systems? I made up the definition. I'll tell you what I mean. I'll go through the six months of transformation that we went through with an actual client. Talk about what I think the secret sauce is. And then uh, after that, like what made us successful was asking for help. And that's really hard to do sometimes. Most times. Especially if you're a, a government entity with lots of bureaucracy. Like, there's lots of reasons why it's hard to do. Um, and then I can leave it open for questions or you can interrupt me as we go. I don't mind either way. Like if you have a question and, I'm, and you'd like me to talk a little more about it, feel free to stop me and ask me. All right. Hello. Uh, that's me before I had LASIK. Uh, my name is Ivan Stegic. I live in Minneapolis. I have a background in physics. I used to be in the R&D groups at Honeywell and at Animation, so I have a pretty um, sort of deep scientific background. But I double majored in physics and psychology, so I also have sort of a left brain, right brain thing, which is why this talk is very touchy-feely. Um, I've been playing with Drupal and tinkering with it since 2007 when I started 10.7 um, and I did that by mistake and I chose Drupal because I tried WordPress, Joomla and Drupal all at the same time on a client project and decided that Joomla sucked, WordPress couldn't do enough and Drupal was the way to go. Um, 10.7? Oh, yeah, I'm CEO of 10.7, that was the last thing. 10.7, uh, we are a digital agency that builds, rescues, and cares for Drupal sites and their teams. We're based in Minneapolis. We have 12 staff across the United States. Um, and our mission is to make things that matter. What does that actually mean? It means that with a client like Second Harvest Heartland, no one should go hungry. We'll remember their mission and what they do every day in the work we do. With St. Catharines, it means to educate women to lead and influence. That's what drives us as well. With the Historical Society of Minnesota, their mission is to have inclusive, powerful engagement history. With Western Technical College, relevant, high-quality education in a collaborative, sustainable environment. Make things that matters also means promoting economic, social, cultural, and environmental progress, which is Oregon State University. You can kind of tell we work with universities and nonprofits, um, and also with government, as it turns out. So why are we here? What is this actually about? So this is the story of how we helped a closely knit team inside a state government department transform their existing Drupal site and themselves. Or if you look at the words here, we helped a team inside government transform their Drupal site and themselves. And essentially, we helped a Drupal team or a team transform. So this is a specific to Drupal, to government, or to non-profits. I fundamentally believe that this is true for any team. We just happen to do it with the Drupal team. The mission of the Department of Health at the state of Minnesota is to protect, maintain, and improve the health of all Minnesotans. And since we're headquartered in Minnesota, that's a mission that's very near and dear to my heart. I live in Minneapolis. Um, and this is about the work we did with the state of Minnesota's health department. 
So I'm going to take a step back and kind of define what I mean by transform. What does it mean to you? What did it mean to the Minnesota Department of Health? Did it mean them having a faster site? Maybe a site that's easier to navigate? Or maybe an easier update? Easier to update? Did it mean a transformation making it more secure? Or something that pays attention to accessibility? Did it mean a team that knows more about Drupal? Maybe a team that works faster and closer to each other? Maybe a site that works faster. Maybe a team that has empathy. Maybe transformation means all of these things. So, in my opinion, improvement lives on a continuum from here to there. And it always involves iteration. And transformation is the sum of all of these improvements. So to get real transformation, you have to make a lot of headway in many small things. And it's not just code. It's not just code review. It's not just accessibility. It's not just the DevOps around how things are deployed. It's about people, too, and how those teams work together. So that's what I mean by transforming. What do I mean by nimble Drupal systems? So let's define that. Nimble, here's the dictionary definition. Quick and light in action. Something that's fast, but light. System, this is kind of a more standard definition. Set of related things that are perceived as a whole. So, nimble Drupal systems are quick, light, Drupal-related things that work together as a whole. So basically anything that interacts with your Drupal site, including people, especially people, because you're not going to have a successful Drupal site or a successful any site without a successful team. And now that we've defined nimble Drupal systems, let's take a peek at the six months of transformation. What's the secret sauce? So the genesis of this project with the state of Minnesota was that we were on a, and still hold a contract with the state, which puts us on a list. And so when someone needs something, they can issue an RFP, they can say it's all 200, 200, 500 contract holders, or it's a select 15, or they can reach out to a particular entity and ask them if they're interested. They happen to reach out to us, we could use some Drupal support, can you help us? That was their first step. And we were like, holy cow, that's like the best thing to have happen, right? When someone actually wants the thing you are selling and believes you can help them. So the first step is asking. They had to ask us. And in my opinion, the second step should always be leading with empathy and thinking about why they asked us, what are their actual problems, how can we help them, and not assuming that they just want a transaction. And fundamentally, this is the secret sauce of any transformation. It's kind of easy to do. A lot of people don't do it. So what did the first month look like? Well, we kicked off. We got started, and we hit the ground running. Wrong. It's not what happened. We have to have a contract and a statement of work. We have to get all the legal things out of the way. Sure, we're on this list, but there still needs to be a definition of what work we're going to do. It always takes longer than expected. So be mindful, have empathy, and plan for that additional time. They want to get going, we want to get going. 
if you expect that you're going to, if you expect that you're not going to get going right away, the frustration levels are going to be much lower. In addition to that contract and statement of work, we have to get access to all the things that they have, right? Accounts, credentials, multi-factor, VPN. I don't know how many times we all had to talk to IT at the state of Minnesota just to get VPN accounts working. It's a lot. And it's important to channel that empathy. Finally, after about a month, everyone was ready to get going. So it turns out that this was their team's first Drupal site. Yay! Uh, it also turns out they didn't have any experience with Drupal and that they were doing this during COVID. And you can imagine, for the Department of Health, that's kind of a big deal. They migrated to Drupal from Lucy, which I'd never heard of, but it was something that they migrated to from Cold Fusion before that. And so you can imagine what that was like. All of the content that was in the original Cold Fusion site went into the Lucy site. They brought over into the Drupal site without having any real experience with Drupal into one content type. <laughs> And they did this and launched in 2022, and it took them about two years to accomplish, maybe three. So we spent the first um, month getting everything in order, starting to realize like what the site was about, having the empathy that, okay, here's where all of this came from, and here's all the baggage that you would expect. And the second month we spent listening learning, doing a ton of walkthroughs, walkthroughs their site, walkthroughs of the deployment system and the DevOps that they had in place. They discovered a whole bunch of things they didn't know. We did as well. The idea here is to be a team, be a team with your clients, discovering the things that you need to discover. After doing this intense listening, we went through three audits. We audited their technical deployment. We audited their user experience and their accessibility. We remembered to be mindful. Remembering this is content from a Cold Fusion site that has evolved. They didn't do any content strategy, any real content strategy to move it into that single basic page. And VPN always bites. And so there's always access issues. Lead with empathy. Don't let that frustrate, frustrate you. And after we had done these audits, we provided them with recommendations, reports, priorities, a roadmap for the rest of the engagement, and a desire to iterate. And after we were done listening and providing recommendations, we spent the remaining four months slowly improving many little things. We were conscious of being empathetic in every line of code, in every meeting, in every interaction. We modeled the behavior and we tried to be the people that we thought they would be inspired by to continue the work after we were done. It's important to remember to be inclusive at all stages. So when you have check-ins, don't miss them. Have them. Record them if that's possible. Sometimes legally you're not allowed to because government. Um, but don't skip a check-in because there's nothing to say. It's important to still have that face time, even if it's for five minutes. Everything's good? Move on. Use the tools that work for everyone, everyone. Try to have the least amount of friction possible. We're a Slack company. We use Jira. We use Zoom. We use Google Workspace. MDH is a Microsoft shop. They use Teams. We weren't going to force 
the government to use our tools. So we use Teams, we use their chat. It's important to have that empathy. And then keep really good notes that are easily accessible to everyone. And if possible, include transcripts of those meetings and um, check-ins that you've had. It's important to remember to be inclusive as well with any of the security, envir in security environments and workflows that they already have. They had an internally managed, hosted at, AM at AWS site. We were not going to be able to move them to Pantheon. Like, let's work with what you have. Let's put in best practices where we can. There were very strict security requirements that Minute had. And of course, this forces the best, best practices from a DevOps perspective. We like that. But there's no UI like Pantheon or Acquia has, right? So we have to come up with additional documentation and things that can help. They really didn't have a way to do multi-developer, multi-branch work. So we brought that to them. That's being inclusive, being able to do the work on your local machine so that someone else can replicate it, whether it's at 10.7 or at the state. That's important. And all of these things are Drupal systems, whether you like them or not. It's not just the Drupal 10 code. It's DDEV that you're using. It's the system that is deploying the, the CI CD that is pushing things to their AWS. It's the people that are using them. It's the content strategy. It's all of it that's related. They're all Drupal systems. So from a technical Drupal systems implementation, what did we do? We updated their build pipeline while keeping their minute security requirements. We retired a Bitnami image that they were using in favor of a lighter, more performant set of containers. Those containers were based on some work we did on a product we had called Flight Deck, which was a very limited set of Docker containers that were used locally and also in production and staging for hosting. So you have the same containers in all places. Really nice when you need to debug things. We had to scale Drupal at AWS with local developer tooling in mind. So documentation and making sure that their developers can continue the work that we're doing after our engagement is over. We also reduced the number of languages and <laughs> many scripts that existed in the, th in the repository and did a general deep clean of the site. They also had a major file migration that we helped them with. Um, can you imagine all of these old PDFs from the ColdFusion site on a server somewhere unmanaged? Drupal doesn't like unmanaged files, it tends to delete them. So we wrote a migration that helped that to get into the Drupal site so that they wouldn't be deleted. And of course, documentation is critical. Write about everything you do that helps being inclusive. Do all of these things, doing all of these things so that Drupal systems can work together to make people shine. Not just the Drupal installation. We did more than code with them in those four months. We had a UX systems implementation. We reviewed their site in one of those audits and uh, made sure that we were using sticky search elements. So the ability to have the search bar in the same place on all pages, kind of important. We created custom blocks so that they didn't have to edit calls to action on every page independently when they needed to make a change. It's obvious when you think about it, put it in the block, drop the block on all pages, problem solved. We updated and streamlined their use of accordion we did some basic brand stuff, aligned their font usage across the site, site so that they met brand standards, fixed the hierarchy, that kind of stuff. That's the next one. Fixed, reviewed and improved text hierarchy and clarity. 
And then we came up with a content moderation strategy. You can imagine that there is a need to have accurate data by the Department of Health. Um, and the thing we learned and tried to implement here is that this is not a Drupal problem. This is a human problem. And it requires a human solution. And so we build the system to solve the problem as opposed to using workflow or another module that exists and then trying to fit that module into the problem that we have. We don't change the problem to fit a Drupal module. A dozen years ago, we had a, um, a developer on staff who wrote a module for Drupal 7. We never put it on Drupal.org, but he called it Tattler. And it was his solution on how to do content moderation that was just good enough and simple. And the idea here was, Every day, there's a cron job that runs, and it does a diff of the content that changed between yesterday and or in the last 24 hours. And if there's a change, an email goes out to an admin or a group of admins with the links to the nodes that changed and a diff of what changed. And the admin can then say, oh, we weren't supposed to do that. Revert to the previous node. or they'd look at it and say, oh yeah, that's all fine. That's a much simpler administrative solution to a problem where you have a smaller team of moderators and you can, you can deal with errors or publication, publishing something that might not be critical, that it was there for half a day. Instead of implementing a giant workflow with different states that no one ever uses, worse, no one ever understands. This way, the publishers can just do what they need to, and an admin can say, yeah, that's fine, or no, whoops, let's change that. So it really, you have to look at the human problem and fix it, as opposed to making the problem fit a module. We also did some workshops, workshops with them and did a bunch of accessibility work. As you can imagine, when they migrated from Cold Fusion, um, there were, there were, they went willy-nilly, I'll say, with tags. There were thousands of tags on the site. We were able to do some content strategy and help them out. So we went from thousands to less than 100. We optimized them, categorized them into primary and secondary, and helped them re-tag. We started helping them re-tag the content that they had. We also moderated access to who could actually add tags. That's kind of important too, because if everyone can add tags, you run into a problem with too many tags. We also moved away from a single basic content type and manual updates to all of them. You can imagine that that helped as well. We did work with accessibility, did an audit of the production site, we were mindful that the production site isn't just the user, the citizen, but also the admin user. We have 10 dozen editors, maybe more. We want to make sure that their experience is good too and accessible. We categorized each of the accessibility issues with critical and non-critical and tried to address the critical ones as soon as we could. And then we tweaked some of the Drupal settings in the in the admin interface so that there were things like alt tags that were required. You know, very basic things like that. These incremental changes across the board led to a transformation of the site. Doesn't mean we're done. Remember that those incremental changes are on a continuum. We keep getting better. And of course, we also fine-tuned their image size um, and JPEG optimization settings, made sure that image cache and all of those um, settings were set correctly. And in some cases, it prevented 20 megabyte JPEGs from being uploaded. So transformation was a multifaceted approach to improving as many systems as possible, both people and Drupal. And 
think we were really successful in doing that. Asking for help, though, is often hard to do. I think it's easier if the circumstances are different. If you're in a for-profit where you have a budget and you can just go hire a consultant, much easier. But sometimes it's hard because maybe it doesn't even occur to you that you could ask for help. Community, the more eyes we have on things, the better it becomes. So try to remember that it's okay to ask for help. There are others that have experienced this before. Sometimes it's hard to ask for help because you're a lone developer and you might be embarrassed to show your code. Here's an opportunity for us as an industry to lead with empathy and to remind people we've all been there before. We were junior once. We all have imposter syndrome. It is pervasive amongst everyone in all levels. Another reason why it's hard to ask for help is can I even afford it? And often the answer is probably. Even if it's just a short audit engagement, don't need to reinvent the wheel, which is also something that prevents you from asking for help because you might think it's so bad we just need a new site, and you probably don't. There's likely lots to do without having to start from scratch. And then another reason why it's hard to ask for help is bureaucracy, RFPs, competitive bids, legal requirements. There's always a way to figure that out whether it's a list of vendors or a contract vehicle like Kerasoft, um, reach out, just ask. And that's the whole talk, thank you. Um, I'm thankful to all the volunteers that help in putting these camps together, the Drupal community at large, without which none of this would be possible. And uh, that's .com if you need to reach <laughs> Although I wonder if the .co would work. I don't think it would. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Very nice. Any comments or questions? Maybe. <laughs>
still are you still engaged with this plan on an ongoing basis? Or is this, no, this we're six not. Months. So this six months engagement, uh, we had hoped to continue working with them. Unfortunately, um, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, the state of Minnesota legalized marijuana. And so then the state of department, the Department of Health had to change their focus all of a sudden to enable websites and um, like actually facilitating that. Yeah. Um, and as a result, they put their Drupal stuff on maintenance. And so they have Drupal, you know, their Drupal developers internally doing what they can. I'm hoping they come back and you know we realize some of the funds of the uh, yeah the benefits of what they legalized. Yeah. So, um, no. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.